Gemma Gray. Gemma Gray is founder of Coloring Outside the Lines, a peer-to-peer -peer network specifically created for parents and carers of autistic girls. Set up when awaiting her own daughter's diagnosis, the group provides immediate support, understanding, and advice from over 6,500 global members. The group is autism positive, welcoming of autistic input, and run by a volunteer admin team of neurodivergent and neurotypical parents. Although Gemma's background is in advertising and marketing, she's passionate about improving the lives of autistic females and has recently completed her Churchill Fellowship in Canada and the U.S. focusing on innovative social and employment opportunities for autistic women. Gemma is late diagnosed autistic and lives in Edinburgh, Scotland. Gemma Gray. Gemma Gray est la fondatrice de Coloring Outside the Lines, un réseau d'entraide spécialement conçu pour les parents et soignants soignantes de filles autistes. Créé pendant qu'elle attendait le diagnostic de sa propre fille, ce groupe offre un soutien immédiat, de la compréhension et des conseils provenant de plus de 6500 membres à travers le monde. Ce réseau valorise une approche positive de l'autisme, accueille les contributions d'autistes et est géré par une équipe bénévole de parents neurodivergents et neurotypiques. Bien que Gemma ait un parcours en publicité et marketing, elle est passionnée par l'amélioration de la vie des femmes autistes et a récemment terminé sa bourse Churchill au Canada et aux États-Unis, où elle s'est concentrée sur des opportunités sociales et professionnelles innovantes pour des femmes autistes. Gemma a été diagnostiquée autiste tardivement et vit à Indiebrook, en Écosse. Hello. I'm Gemma Gray. I'm founder of Coloring Outside the Lines, which is a peer-to-peer -peer network for parents of autistic girls. Um, I set it up while I was awaiting my daughter's diagnosis, as there was very little information out there relating specifically to autistic girls. And in this group that we have, um, members get really quick information from other members um, and really quickly, completely free. And it's support relating to a whole myriad of topics. And we seek to empower parents and carers of autistic girls with the sort of knowledge and information so that they can support their daughters really, really well and help them thrive. And that's the topic that we're going to be going through today. Today, I'm going to use that collective knowledge from Coloring Outside the Lines and the experience that I've had to give some top tips, help with some common areas of parental concern when you're raising autistic girls. And these tips will hopefully help and support you to support your daughter to thrive. Obviously, it is just a short presentation, so it's top line information. But I really look forward to the question and answer session that we will hopefully be doing after this. Now, I'm not going to talk a huge amount about the signs of autism in girls. That's a completely different topic. But there are definitely some things that I would like to note. In Colouring Outside the Lines, we notice three stages of sort of aha moments when parents tend to go and get a diagnosis for their daughter. Seven to eight, where that cute, quirky behaviour um, that was never really noted on before suddenly becomes an issue at school. Then it leaps to about 12 and 13, where hormones are raging, peers are becoming a little bit mean, frankly, um, and changes of school loom. And then it's 16 plus. It's where, again, hormones, but also that independence is looming, academic pressures and often anxiety and eating disorders get spotted first and lead to the diagnostic pathway for autism. And I would always say the earlier that your daughter can be diagnosed, the better, so that she has time to understand herself, get to know who she is and what her needs are. We often see as well that some of the girls are real risk takers. And on the completely other end of the scale, extremely risk averse. Um, and so all the information today will apply to whichever autistic girl, it's whichever autistic daughter you're, you're dealing with. Um, and But factor that in because you will maybe potentially have to adapt some of these and also depending whether they have a, a PDA, a pathological demand avoidance profile as well. So first one is bedtime. Bedtime can be incredibly stressful for autistic girls. There's tiredness, there's additional anxieties, and it's the biggest transition period of the day. And separation anxiety can play a huge part as well. 
a lot of our, our members in Culinary Outside the Lines, bedtime can be a really challenging time of day. So my top tip for this would be try and have a really predictable routine that you have every single night. I know that can be really hard to achieve, but believe me, it really helps. It gives reassurance to your daughter and it means that she knows what's going to happen next. But also you as the parent need to leave your emotions at the door. Yes, we're all tired at that time of day as well. Um, and often it's really hard to do that. But if you can leave your emotions at the door, it ensures that your daughter doesn't pick up on your own tiredness or your grumpiness or your sort of change in expression. So for bedtime, consistency all the way through and keep going with it. Visual timers can help. Lovely um, sort of aromatherapy can help. Having uh, books or audible books to help her get to sleep and night lights, all of those things. The two key things is predictability and as a parent, leaving your emotion at the door. So the second area that we see lots of concerns come to the fore is friendships and the worries of friendships. Making and maintaining friendships can be a huge struggle for autistic girls, um, especially in the sort of school situation. It's because it's really hard sometimes to understand what's going on with a group of people and where you fit into somewhere. So that's why these friendship issues, especially as girls are getting a little bit older, again, that cute quirkiness can wear off and children themselves are becoming a little bit more suspicious of difference. But my top tip would be to make sure that your daughter knows what a good friendship is. This is really important because autistic girls are a bit more vulnerable and are can be taken for advantage of. So it's working out how you show them just what a great friendship is and that that friendship is based on support and mutual care and mutual respect. Sometimes you can use role play to help talk through that and sort of teach them and model conversations that a good friend would do and a not good friend would do. And sometimes just spending that time will help your daughter be able to work out where the frenemies are and where the good friends are. Sometimes they'll also need some conversation starters so that when they meet new people for the first time, they can feel confident in asking a few things. And this will be age appropriate, obviously, but that can really, really help them. And I would always say, Find people with similar interests. Similar interests can be so powerful for autistic girls. Um, and I would always say, try and seek out other autistic girls as well so that they can make a friendship group, potentially where the masking and the camouflaging doesn't need to take place quite so much. Now, meltdowns or shutdowns are a really emotional part of raising an autistic child. It's not just emotional for us as parents, though. It's highly emotional and highly challenging for um, the autistic girl themselves. Especially in those early days when you don't really know what's going on. You're not really sure where this behaviour is coming from. And some people see meltdowns as bad behaviour. It is not. A meltdown is not a tantrum. A meltdown is not something that should ever be punished. A, re uh, a meltdown really is an overload it's a complete sensory overload. But by recognising the sort of signs, triggers, that will really help you support your daughter so that she feels safe um, and cared for before, during and after. And remember when I said you need to leave your emotions at the door? Meltdowns is where that really works as well. My top tip if a meltdown is coming, and often you can see that it's coming, it's a change in behaviour. Potentially she doesn't want to talk, potentially she's getting um, sort of easy to anger. But you'll yourself be able to work that out with her where some of those signs are. But when you see that coming, it can feel inevitable. It feels almost as though the meltdown has to really blow up before she can even calm down again. And my top tip is to remain calm. Stop asking questions because questions are more sensory input and reassure her. You have to stay calm throughout. Maybe try and use one phrase if she's really in that sort of meltdown phrase of you're safe or it's okay. 
And sometimes you just have to ride it out for a bit of time, but always making sure that she's safe. And of course, this may be a shutdown as well as meltdown. There's lots of reading that you can do about the difference in between those. But never, ever punish a meltdown. It's not a temper tantrum. It's not them trying to get their own way. It's a huge buildup, a real huge emotional buildup. And they can feel terrible at the end of a meltdown. They can feel emotionally very, very vulnerable. So be there for them, support them, care for them, tell them how much you love them. Now, school, again, is one of these other areas that we get lots and lots of questions about. And school can be utterly exhausting, bewildering and frightening for an autistic girl. And it's because there's this sensory overload. And that means getting too much information throughout a day. There's also academic pressure, though, and there's also other people. So it sort of becomes a perfect recipe. There's a great theory that some people use um, or an explanation, and it's called the Coke can effect. So if you imagine getting a can of Coca-Cola and when you walk into school, every time something is a bit off or difficult or a bit too loud or somebody being mean, you shake that can of Coke. You just imagine that happening throughout the school day. And then, of course, when they get into your car or when they get home at the end of the day, it's as though you've opened that can of Coke and everything from the day is exploding out. So they can be seen by their teachers to be absolute sweetness and light, perfect student during the day. And then when they come home, they can really explode or melt down. And it's because they're hugely dysregulated from the day that they've had. And it's because you are their safe space. They can they can do that with you. And my top tip for school, there's lots of tips, but my top tip for school is to make sure that you get school on your side early and understanding what's going on and push for the simple changes that can make a really big difference. So things like sites of timetables in advance, forewarning for events or own clothes days, a quiet place for your daughter to go to that she knows she can go to if she needs it. That may be a library um, or a sort of safe space within the school. And getting her main teachers to really understand the benefit of calmly explaining, giving clear instructions and breaking down tasks into chunks. And just simply understanding that she may be learning differently. And so get them on board, get them on side and see what they can do to support you. You may have to become that parent, the one that's always pushing, but that's okay. That's your daughter that you're doing it for. And homework, of course, at school, homework can be a really big issue, um, often because it's homework. Why would you do schoolwork at home? So speak to them about homework. Can it be broken down into more tasks? Can they do it at school with a homework club? That can really help. Or does it in fact need to be done? Again, that's age appropriate, but is it really worth having huge, you know, shouting matches at the home at the end of the day, trying to get homework done, when actually they could just do some reading or listen to an audio book instead? The final section is about supporting independence. And no matter what age your daughter is, you're probably looking at ways to support her independence and get her prepared for the next stage. And independence will, of course, look very different to each girl, but routine and structure helps them with all of it. So it may be that she's, you know, three or four years old and you want to make sure that she knows how to brush her teeth on her own before she goes to bed. Or it may be your daughter's 16, 17, and you're looking at her moving away from home and how she's going to cope with that and how to support her with that. But for all of them, no matter how bright or academic your daughter is, breaking things down into smaller, manageable tasks can really help. You can do the same for young girls as well. Bedtime routines, break it down into small visual tasks. For older girls, you can also do that. And praise often. Be prepared to go through a few things a few times. Make it into small, manageable steps. But give praise. And if you need to, do it again and do it again. And those visual aids and those task reminders, things like alarms on phones or post-it notes or apps, can again help us start to take that little bit of control for the next step. So sit down with her. Help her set realistic, achievable goals, because 
You don't want anybody falling at the first hurdle. You want them to achieve those steps and build up. So it may be learning to cook a couple of dishes so that if she goes leaves home for college or university, she knows what to do. It may be sitting down with her and working out how to manage her pocket money and budgeting, or simply establishing a routine of tidying her room, helping around the house. The thing we always have, we cannot lose sight of is that teenage autistic girls will have the same problems that teenagers have, as well as some of the issues that autistic girls have. Um, and younger girls, we can't just see autism as the thing that is um, stopping them doing things or altering the way they look at things. They're young people, they're children. They need to be taught, helped, supported. So we've spoken about bedtime and friendship worries, meltdowns, school and supporting independence. And for all of these, there are some quick fire top tips that I think can really help right the way across. And they're my little steps that I think really make a difference. Number one would be pre plan where possible. This applies to anything. Holidays, shopping, visiting friends, going to an event. And by pre planning I mean detail, lots and lots of detail. Time, maps of what places look like, how we're going to get there, what we're going to do when we're there. It may feel incredibly rigid, but actually having a holiday plan for seven days, saying that you're going to do an activity in the morning, then lunch, rest in the afternoon, will give a level of reassurance to your daughter so that she can really enjoy that holiday or activity. So pre-plan where possible. Second top tip, ask in advance. If you're going to the airport, ask what they can do with regards to assistance. Um, in Scotland here, and in lots of countries around the world, there's a sunflower lanyard. That can mean that you get help getting through the airport swiftly, quickly. That makes it a lot more, a lot less stressful than airports can be. Theatres as well. If you go into the theatre, can you get in early so you can sit down and she can have the noise build up around her? So ask in advance. If you don't ask, you don't get. Third one. Give listening and understanding time with any request. It's just time to process. You can maybe even say, okay, I'd like to ask you about this. I'm going to ask you the question. I'm just going to pop the kettle on for a cup of tea and then maybe we can talk about that. Give her time to think and process with anything that you're talking about. Don't put her under pressure because, again, pressure creates anxiety. So that's giving listening and understanding time. My fourth one is use humour where and when you can. Sometimes humour can really alleviate a situation, you know, elevate it from being a little bit tense to something that's really quite amusing. So if you can use humour with your daughter, if you're having tricky conversations or anything like that, that little bit of humour can add a bit of lightness and can make her feel again reassured and it's all okay but use humour the, at the appropriate times. Fifth one, reassure and validate. By validating feelings, by reassuring that what she's doing is okay and it's understandable, makes a massive difference. You'll know yourself if somebody says, oh yeah, I've felt like that before. It validates how you're feeling and makes you feel far more confident about your position. Sixth one would be choose your moments. It's a little bit like choosing your battles as well. Read the room, see what mood she's in, see how she's coping that day and just choose your moments for discussion. Don't uh, wait until two minutes after they've come home from school through the door to suddenly ask a barrage of questions. It's never going to work. So just be aware as the parent to choose your moment. The next one would be brainstorm together. I am a big believer that our autistic daughters should be included in absolutely everything about when we're talking about their future or how to help and support them. They know what they need and it means that they themselves can start to advocate for themselves when they're a little bit older and that they know that their opinions matter. So don't suddenly give them a plan of what's happening on holiday. Sit and talk through it and go through it with them. And then prioritise self-care. 
and emotional regulation. Let them take time to rest. Never say that they're being lazy. Let them sit, let them relax, let them have a duvet day when they need it. If they're telling you they're tired or they cannot do something, yes, you can gently persuade, but self-care and letting them emotionally regulate is hugely important. So I hope that those top tips will help you to support your daughter, maybe feel a bit more informed and perhaps a little less alone. But no matter what, I believe that the family support is so vital to help autistic girls to thrive. Recognise and celebrate their individual strengths, because that's always important. Validate how she, re how she feels and do some great reading so that you're informed and you can work with her to work through anything that crops up calmly. And remember to look after yourself and scaffold your well-being as well. So I look forward to the Q&A. Thanks very much for listening. Take care.